A furry is someone who's interested in anthropomorphic animals, which is basically animals that walk on two legs and talk. We all just share the same interests of cosplay and our cute little characters that we make. Sometimes we go to meet, sometimes we just public suit, but parks are definitely good places to go see people. It's supposed to turn heads and make people like, what is that? And that's just the joy. It's just so worth it. <laughs> A furry is someone who enjoys anthropomorphic animals. Basically animals that like have human characteristics, Mickey Mouse, that sort of thing. You're getting into a character when you've got your suit on. I just describe my style as being very over-exaggerated and animated in a very cartoon way, but as an animal would in a fictional world. I'm Radio and I'm a furry, an artist and a costume designer. I'm Flick, I'm a furry, fursuit maker, content creator. Flick is a yellow cat, just a normal house cat. He's full of energy, he's dead outgoing, like super confident. Radio is a red panda crossed with a border collie. I think because they're just two of my favourite animals, I just kind of wanted to combine that. I design personas and characters. I'm lucky enough to be able to take commissions and make money from it. It really focuses on bringing out the inner child in you. And I think that's the whole point, is just to have fun, escape like normal life for a day run around, be a fluffy character. Yeah. <laughs> I first got involved in the community when I was probably about 13 years old. I just found the community through YouTube videos, a lot of fursuit dancing videos, and I think primarily the artwork and costumes. I was definitely a lot more socially anxious, and I think doing this has brought a lot of confidence in me. I just love the confidence that my fursuit gives me and I don't have to worry about what I look like. People just see radio and he's so bouncy and energetic. People like children love taking pictures with radio and that's just where most of the happiness of doing this comes from for me. It's just making people smile. Yeah, it's fun to just see everyone's face light up when a big fluffy yellow cat comes bounding over to them and saying hi, hello. <laughs> it's just great. I have started making personal suits. So I made my very first suit at 15. Looking back on it, I definitely have improved. For Flick, it took me about three, four months to make the head, the paws, the tail. I love being involved in the art community. I feel so grateful that people enjoy my work enough to want to buy it. Suits are very expensive. Uh, it's definitely a very expensive hobby. There is a lot of makers out there that do it full time and have very high quality costumes. And they can go from anywhere between 500 pounds and even up to probably like 7,000, 8,000. I saw one sell on an auction for 6,000, I think, the other day. <laughs> so it's definitely good money. <laughs> The fandom is very community based and I think it does primarily come from online. It's a great way to make friends and I think it's probably one of the best communities I've been in that really connect people from all over the world. I've met some of the nicest people and most of my friends now are furries. But yeah, we all just share the same interests of cosplay and our cute little characters that we make. One of the most well-known thing about the furry community is fursuits because a lot of the pictures that are taken at like cons and meets and stuff are of the fursuits because that's like the main thing but it's so much more than just the fursuit cosplays and stuff it's all the art and everyone getting together and having fun and it's just great <laughs> i do digital art and it's actually how i think i first really started off in the fandom when i first made my furry instagram i started off drawing and it really kind of was how I grew as a person and became more like known in the fandom before I got my fursuit. I started off traditional artwork, just sketching characters and stuff. I actually made Flick out of just a sketch of a cool cat and was like, huh, I can take that further. Sometimes we do get a lot of negative interactions, um, but I think that's mostly because of how some media portrays furries because they do portray them in a very negative light, uh, mostly because of just not understanding it. It sucks, really, because all it really is is just we're cosplaying our own original characters, really. It's just a costume. <laughs> I focus just so much more on the positive interactions I get. 
Like I've had people on my TikTok make fan pages for me and there's people that like look up to me and say they're inspired by me. Just going to meet some friends at the park. Ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. from Newcastle, a lot of people that we met last night at a convention, so we don't get to see often, so it'll be really fun to see everyone. Sometimes we go to meet, sometimes we just public suit, but parks definitely good places to go see people. Being a furry makes me feel super confident, it's fun to go around suiting, having a good time, saying hi to people. Being a furry makes me happy. I have a lot of anxiety and I also have a very stressful job. I work within healthcare. You probably wouldn't think it. <laughs> it's just a way for me to kind of de-stress and get out of a mindset that can be quite upsetting and debilitating. I feel really good because it's sort of almost something to hide behind and like when I'm feeling sort of quite anxious or I just want to mess around and have some fun, it's sort of nobody really has what you do. It's a hobby that's supposed to be stupid. It's supposed to turn heads and make people like, what is that? And that's just the joy. I, I love getting those reactions out of people. It's weird, but it's fun. Yeah. And it's just so worth it. For the people who are really judgmental about it, I'd just say research into it, because the more you know about something, the more you realise that it's completely harmless. We have two trans kids. Anyone can be whoever they want. I'm just owning it. Our family is seen to be very unconventional. So I had kids and I can't be hot anymore. Like, moms are hot too. People say I look like a thug, but I love thugs. I take that as a compliment. I'm bored of people thinking that I cannot be intimate. I'm a young, single, hot piece of disabled booty. I feel like I'm going to look at myself and be like, who is that? Life is way too short to be hiding. It is my story. It is my truth.